Hello and welcome back to Koala Moon, children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. This is Buck the Beaver and the Lullaby Bird by Luke Prendergast. Buck the Beaver lived on a dam on the Sleepy River. He had built it himself many years before out of sticks and stones and had lived there ever since. His dam was the envy of all the other creatures living in Sleepy Forest. When Buck invited them over for afternoon parties on the river, where they would sing and play games and eat homemade cupcakes, they would all marvel at his craftsmanship and congratulate him on his wonderful wooden home. It's the most brilliant dam I've ever seen, said Peanut the armadillo, who was Buck's best friend. Buck loved his dam very much. But recently, on one of his pleasant strolls along the riverbank with Peanut, he had discovered a spot further upstream that he'd never seen before. This spot, Buck thought, was the most perfect place for a dam. It was so beautiful, he had never once laid eyes upon anything like it. The banks on either side of the river were spread with wildflowers, crocuses and daisies and daffodils, with honeybees buzzing from bud to bud, and the river water so perfectly clear, it sparkled like hundreds of gemstones. Buck decided he simply had to live there. So for some weeks, Buck had spent every waking moment building himself a new home in this perfect spot upstream. There was nothing Buck loved more than building and fixing things. It was his true element. It was as natural and irresistible a thing for a beaver to build as for a fish to swim or for a candle to burn. Each day he scampered through the forest collecting the best twigs that the oak trees had dropped and the sturdiest fragments of rock. And he took these back to Sleepy River and used them to build his new dam. He used his two big front teeth to gnaw the wood into shape to build his walls and his staircase and the chairs for his table. And each night, as the sun went down, he would swim home downstream on his back his arms folded behind his head, looking up at the purple sky and daydreaming about the time when he'd be able to sleep in his beautiful new dam. Soon enough, that time came. At last, Buck had made the finishing touches to the kitchen and had planted some flowers on the roof garden where he could sit in the afternoon and watch the crystal water flowing by. He packed up the last of his belongings and, for the final time, said goodbye to his old dam. It had been a good home to him, and for a moment he felt very sorry to leave it behind. Thank you, he whispered slowly to the old dam. I'll miss you. He shut the door softly behind him. On his first evening in his new dam, Buck felt very happy indeed. It was everything he had ever imagined. He tucked himself into bed, pulling the soft downy pillow under his head and tugging the covers up under his chin. He closed his eyes and breathed deeply, and just as he was about to drift into a deep and peaceful sleep, something made him sit up. What was that? It was a sound coming from outside. It sounded like someone singing. Yes, that was definitely what it was. He could hear the voice, the notes dropping like leaves through the forest. It was certainly a beautiful voice, Buck thought, soft and sweet as honey. But the tune it was singing was very lively indeed the kind of song to get you up and out of bed in the morning and ready for a day of working on the dam. Not the kind of song that would send you to sleep. 
Buck lay back down and pulled his pillow over his head to try to block out the sound. But it wouldn't work. No matter what he did, no matter how hard he tried to get himself to sleep, he could still hear the singing. It was keeping him up. A little grumpily, Buck got out of bed. He pulled on his socks and his boots and he did up his laces. He pulled on his hat with red and green checks and flattened the flaps over his ears to keep them warm. He stepped out onto his porch, where the darkness was thickening, and listened out for the noise. There it was again, even louder now, whistling through Sleepy Forest. He could hear it coming through the trees, that way. Buck traipsed through the forest, between the wide tree trunks, in the direction of the noise. As he went, it got louder and louder, until finally he looked up into a tree and saw the source of the noise, a nightingale perched on a high-up branch. Excuse me, Buck called up but the nightingale couldn't hear him. Excuse me, he called again a little louder. The nightingale stopped singing and looked down at him. Hello, she said. Can I help you? Yes, please, said Buck, trying his best to be polite. You see, I live on Sleepy River just through those trees there, in a dam I've spent many weeks building. But just now, as I was trying to fall asleep, I couldn't, because all I could hear was your singing. You have a very lovely voice, he added. Just, it's keeping me up. Oh, said the nightingale, blinking her eyes and looking a little abashed. I see, I'm sorry. That's quite all right, said Buck. But would it be possible to keep it down a little, just so that I can sleep? The nightingale nodded her head. Yes, of course, she said. Sorry again. When Buck got back home, he fell quickly into a peaceful sleep. All night he dreamed of willow trees and beech trees. In the dreams he collected the tree's fallen branches and whittled them down with his teeth to make a table with elegant curving legs. The next morning he woke up refreshed and got to work decorating his dam. He strung vines around the eaves and laid a little bed of moss in the corner so that Peanut would have somewhere comfortable to sit when he came round in the afternoon for some tea. By the evening, Buck was exhausted. He got into bed and tucked himself in. He pulled the covers up to his chin, closed his eyes, and was woken once again by the nightingale's song. There it was again, that same loud and lively warbling. It seemed to have the magical power of making him completely and utterly awake. Grumpy again, Buck got up, put on his boots, pulled his hat over his ears and trudged through the forest. The night was dark and the air smelled damp and mulchy. When he reached the nightingale's tree, he called up, Excuse me, excuse me. The nightingale stopped her singing and looked down. Oh, hello again, she said. Is everything okay? Unfortunately not, said Buck. You see... I was almost falling asleep in my bed when I was woken by your singing. Ah, said the nightingale, looking very sorry. I see. Would it be possible, asked Buck again, if 
you could try to be quiet so that I can get to sleep. Yes, said the nightingale. I'll do my best. Sorry again. And at that, Buck would have turned on his boots and walked back to his dam, except that he saw a look of sorrow pass over the nightingale's face. Buck was a kindly beaver and didn't like to see anyone looking sad, so he asked the nightingale what was wrong. Oh, replied the nightingale, it's nothing really. It's only that it's very hard for me to stop myself from singing. I don't want to disturb any creatures sleeping in Sleepy Forest because I know how important it is to get plenty of sleep. And yet, try as I might, I cannot stop. Singing is in my nature. It brings me joy. It's what makes me, me. So when I try my hardest to stop singing at night, it's like trying to stop being me. The nightingale looked forlornly out at the forest, and Buck felt bad that he had asked her these past two nights to stop singing. He understood exactly what she was saying. Asking her to stop singing would be like asking him to stop his building. Building was his greatest source of happiness. To give it up would be impossible. Buck looked up into the tree and said to the nightingale, No one should ever have to stop doing what's in their very nature. Then he frowned. But on the other hand, all us creatures of Sleepy Forest do need our sleep. Buck tapped his big front teeth with the tip of his finger, which is what he did when he was trying very hard to solve a problem. But this time, Buck was stumped. Hmm. Leave it with me, he said to the nightingale. I'll sleep on it and have a think. And with that, Buck made his way back through the forest, deep in thought, until he reached his dam and the welcome warmth of his bed. The next morning, Buck woke early. He got to work decorating his dam, putting pictures of his friends and family up on the walls and painting the wooden fence that circled the roof garden. But all the while, he was deep in thought about how to solve the dilemma of the nightingale's lively song. It was very important to him that he'd be able to sleep in his new dam at night, but since hearing what the nightingale had said to him last night, it was also important to him that she should carry on singing, as was in her nature. He rummaged through his brain for a solution, but nothing came to him. In the afternoon, Peanut the armadillo came over to see Buck's new dam. He looked around in wonder. It's even better than your last home, he told Buck merrily. And this moss is so deliciously soft and comfortable, I could sit here all day long. Peanut had brought a basket of blackberries that he had picked in the forest himself. The blackberries made their tongues go bright purple. As they ate them, Buck told his best friend about the nightingale's singing and how it was keeping him up. Buck liked to ask Peanut for advice on any matter he was having trouble with because the hedgehog often had a completely different way of looking at things from the beaver. Peanut tapped his tail thoughtfully. Because I like to sleep in the morning, when the sun is rising, he said. I don't have the same problem with the nightingale singing. Ah, said Buck, trying not to let his disappointment show. He had hoped Peanut would be able to help him. But, said Peanut, although I cannot hear the nightingale singing when I am trying to get to sleep, 
I do hear the skylark singing. The skylark? asked Buck. What's the skylark? The skylark, Peanut explained, is the bird of the dawn chorus. She loves to sing when the sun is coming up. But the song she sings is so sweet sounding that I have no trouble sleeping right through it. I have an idea, he said with a start. What's that? asked Buck. We could go and find the skylark and ask her for advice. She's a very wise bird and a very talented singer. I bet she'd know just what to do. This seemed like a very smart plan indeed. So Buck and Peanut finished their blackberries and went out into the forest. The skylark lives this way, Peanut said. He led Buck through the tall pines and broad oaks, who looked down creakily at them like kindly wrinkled men. They crossed a little stream where the fish played, flashing their orange bellies at them as they hopped over the tinkling water. Eventually, Buck began to hear a sound. It was the sound of singing, graceful trills, and beautiful cadences that made him think of beds of leaves and the gentle summer sun. That's her, the skylark, said Peanut. We're almost there. They arrived at a tall pine tree, and Peanut pointed up into the dense leaves. Buck looked up and saw, perched on a branch, the skylark with her bright yellow beak and a crop of feathers on top of her head that pointed up like a crown. Hello, Peanut called. The skylark looked down from her branch. Hello, Peanut, she said. How are you? I'm just rolling with it, Peanut said. This here is my friend Buck the beaver. He's come with me to meet you because he's having a bit of a problem and we think that you might be able to help him. Well, said the skylark. Buck thought her voice was as smooth and sweet as hot chocolate. Why don't you tell me what the problem is and I'll see if I can help. So Buck explained to her about the nightingale who lived near by his dam and her lively singing, which stopped him from being able to sleep. The skylark listened very attentively to every word he said, and when he was done, she spread her wings and swooped down to a lower branch. That is quite a predicament, she said ruffling her feathers and nodding her head with great wisdom. Quite a predicament indeed. Is there anything you can do to help? Peanut asked hopefully. Yes, said Buck, sharing his hope. Is there anything at all? The beaver and the hedgehog looked at the skylark, both of them brimming with expectation. For a little while, the skylark didn't speak. Then, finally, she said, It seems to me that the problem is not so much the nightingale's singing as its liveliness. It is the jolly morning music that means you find it hard to sleep. Yes, Buck said. That's exactly right. Well, the skylark said and gave them both a smile. I think I might just have the solution. But I'll need to speak to the nightingale myself. Could the two of you lead me to where she lives? Of course, they both cried. And at once the three of them set off through the trees, Buck and Peanut scurrying across the forest floor while the skylark flew overhead 
fluttering from branch to branch. Whenever they reached an opening in the trees, the sunlight would cast the skylark shadow onto the floor of the glade, as big and broad as a kite. They crossed back over the little stream and clambered up the slumbering hill until at last they reached the area of a sleepy forest where the nightingale lived. Buck stood at the base of her tree and called up, Hello, Miss Nightingale, are you there? At the sound of his voice, the nightingale peeped out of her nest and looked down. Oh, hello, Buck, she said. Is everything all right? Oh, yes, said Buck, full of excitement. He couldn't wait to see what the Skylark's solution was going to be. You know I promised I would have a think about the problem of your singing and my sleeping, and I have. This is the Skylark. She says she might be able to help us. The Skylark flew to the Nightingale's branch and perched beside her. Hello, Nightingale, she said. Let's see what we can do. Please, would you let me hear your song? The Nightingale was a little shy at first, for she was struck by the Skylark's gentle voice and clear wisdom. But soon she opened her mouth and began to sing. Out came the tune that Buck knew so well, lively as a jig. It made him want to get up and dance. Beside him, even Peanut couldn't help but shake his spines to the rhythm. When the nightingale was finished, the skylark clapped her wings together in applause. That was wonderful, she said. You have a very beautiful voice. Thank you, the nightingale whispered. But your song, the skylark went on, is a morning song. It makes everyone who hears it wide awake and alert. It makes them want to get out of bed and get on with their day, which isn't quite right for the evening, is it? The nightingale agreed and the skylark asked her, Tell me, do you know any lullabies? The nightingale shook her head. What's a lullaby? she asked a little bashfully. A lullaby is a nighttime song, the skylark told her. It's a gentle and peaceful tune that makes anyone who hears it feel warm and cosy and ready for bed. A lullaby is like a gentle bird whose wings carry the hearer into a long, and restful sleep. I don't know any of those, said the nightingale. Well, luckily, the skylark replied, I do, and I can teach you. Buck and Peanut watched in wonder as the skylark taught the nightingale a new song. At first, the nightingale was timid. She stumbled on the notes and kept forgetting the melody. But the skylark told her that with perseverance, anything was possible. And after some time of practicing, the nightingale got the hang of her new song. There we go, said the skylark when the lesson was over. Now. Sing your new song for us. The nightingale looked down at Buck and Peanut, who gave her looks of encouragement. She opened her mouth. She began to sing. The song, Buck thought, was the most tender and beautiful thing 
he had ever heard. Even though it was nowhere near bedtime, he felt it move through him like a magical spell, making his heart soft and his eyes droop, and a feeling of warm tranquility settled over his entire body. Wow, said Peanut dreamily when the song was finished. Wow, indeed the Skylark agreed. Now, after a hard day of work on his dam, or when he has said goodnight to Peanut after they have finished their tea, Buck the Beaver washes his face, brushes his two big front teeth, and gets into bed. He tucks his soft, downy pillow beneath his head and pulls his covers up under his chin. He hears a song coming through the forest, a low and graceful evening song. He feels his eyes close and he smiles softly. Then, as though he is wrapped in the arms of a great warm hug, he falls asleep to the song of the lullaby bird. We are drifting towards dreams now, the happiest, loveliest dreams you've ever dreamt. We're calm and cosy, your breathing is relaxed and you can feel that lovely weight of the blanket keeping you safe and warm. Aren't you comfy? You are so warm and cosy, so sleepy. As you drift into dreams, count all the things you're grateful for. Let yourself fill up with all of the little moments that made you smile today. See the faces of the people that made you laugh. Think of the things that challenged you. Think of the things you learned and the practice that meant you'll be a little bit better tomorrow than you were today. Think about how warm and cosy and sleepy you are here in your bed. What a day you had. Wonderful things lie ahead for you too. You will have wonderful adventures tomorrow and the next day and the one after that. The whole world is waiting for you. But there's no rush. There's nothing more to do today. All that's left for today is rest. Deep, cozy sleep. The most beautiful of dreams are waiting for you now. That's why you're drifting off gently into dreamland. So keep breathing slowly. Let yourself get toasty warm. Let your eyelids stay heavy. And know that you are safe. Remember that you are smart. You are brave. You are kind. And you are loved. Think it to yourself. I am smart. I am brave. I am I am kind. I am loved. You are a dream. When tomorrow comes, you'll face it with a smile. Because you are smart, brave, kind and loved. Because you are you. Uniquely, wonderfully, you.
What kind of dream are you drifting towards tonight? You can dream however you want, because your imagination is as wide as the universe. What will you find in tonight's dream? Maybe you'll see your favourite characters. Is that Hector and Sunny over there? Maybe you'll visit the moon where there's mice eating cheese in the craters. Maybe you'll walk through Sleepy Forest where Coco the koala is strumming his pink ukulele on the banks of Sleepy River. Let your imagination take you away. Your dreams are all yours. And you deserve the sweetest dreams of all. Because you are brave. You are kind. And you are loved. You are brave. You are kind. And you are loved. And you are wonderfully, uniquely you. You are a dream, and it's time to sleep, tucked up in your bed. Breathe slowly and melt into your bed. Isn't it warm and soft and cosy? It's time to rest. Take deep breaths in and out and let yourself relax as you say goodbye to the day. Let your body get even heavier. Let your whole body go floppy. Drift deeper into sleep with every breath and say goodnight. Remember, Tomorrow will be a good day because you have a big heart. You are a good friend. You believe in yourself. You know there's nothing better to be than yourself. It's okay to get things wrong. It's okay to ask for help. You can do whatever you set your mind to. Be proud to be different. Be proud of your achievements. Be proud of yourself. You are a good learner. You are a good listener. You are a good example to others. You are valued. You are loved. You are sleepy. So drift off now, little one. Let the dreams take over. As you sleep, let your dreams take you to magical lands and faraway places. Remember, there's no room for worries in your dreams. Just magic. It's a magic place where anything can happen, anything you want. It's a place of positivity and light. Let positivity soak into you and fill you up. Imagine it as a golden light traveling from the tips of your toes to the top of your head. Imagine that wherever the light touches you fills with happiness. Imagine that the light makes you feel calm. You're wrapped in a warm, cozy glow within your soft, toasty blanket. Isn't that nice? You are safe, tucked up tight. So sleep soundly all through the night. Sweet dreams.
little one. I'll see you soon.